Book Three, Canto Four of the Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Canto Four, Bold Marinel of Britomart is thrown on the rich strand. Fair Florimel of Arthur is long followed, but not fond. Where is the antique glory now become that while I'm wanting women to appear? Where be the brave achievements done by some? Where be the battles, where the shield and spear, and all the conquests which them high did rear, that matter made for famous poets' verse, and boastful men so oft abashed to hear? Be they all dead, and laid in doleful hearse? Or don't they only sleep, and shall again reverse? if they be dead then woe is me therefore but if they sleep oh let them soon awake for all too long i burn with envy sore to hear the warlike feats which homer spake of bold penthisily which made a lake of greekish blood so oft in trojan plain but when i read how stout deborah straight proud sisra and how cameleth slain the huge orsilicus i swell with great disdain Yet these and all that else had Puissance cannot with noble Britomart compare, as well for glory of great valiance as for pure chastity and virtue rare, that all her goodly deeds do well declare. Well worthy stock, from which the branches sprung that in late years so fair a blossom bear, as thee, O queen, the matter of my song, whose lineage from this lady I derive along. Who, when through speeches with the Red Cross Knight she learned had the state of Artegall, and in each point herself informed aright, a friendly league of love perpetual she with him bound, and Conge took withal. Then he forth on his journey did proceed to seek adventures which mote him befall, and win him worship through his warlike deed, which always of his pains he made the chiefest mead. But Britomart kept on her former course ne ever doffed her arms but all the way grew pensive through that amorous discourse by which the red cross knight did erst display her lover's shape and chivalrous array a thousand thoughts she fashioned in her mind and in her feigning fancy did portray him such as fittest she for love could find wise warlike personable courteous and kind with such self-pleasing thoughts her wound she fed and thought so to beguile her grievous smart but so her smart was much more grievous bred and the deep wound more deep in gored her heart that naught but death her dolor mote depart so forth she rode without repose or rest searching all lands and each remotest part following the guidance of her blinded guest till that to the sea-coast at length she her addressed there she alighted from her light-foot beast and sitting down upon the rocky shore bade her old squire unlace her lofty crest though having viewed a while the surge's hoar that gainst the craggy cliffs did loudly roar and in their raging circuitry disdained that the vast earth affronted them so sore and their devouring covetous restrained thereat she sighed deep and after thus complained huge sea of sorrow and tempestuous grief wherein my feeble bark is tossed along far from the hoped haven of relief why do thy cruel billows beat so strong and thy moist mountains each on others throng threatening to swallow up my fearful life o oh, do thy cruel wrath and spiteful wrong at length allay and stint thy stormy strife which in these troubled bowels reigns and rageth rife for else my feeble vessel crazed and cracked through thy strong buffets and outrageous blows cannot endure but needs it must be racked on the rough rocks or on the sandy shallows the whiles that love it steers and fortune rows love my lewd pilot hath a restless mind and fortune boats where no assurance knows but sail withouten stars gainst tide and wind. How can the other do, saith both are bold and blind? Thou god of winds that reignest in the seas, that reignest also in the continent, at last blow up some gentle gale of ease, 
the which may bring my ship ere it be rent under the gladsome port of her intent then when i shall myself in safety see a table for eternal monument of thy great grace and my great jeopardy great neptune i avow to hallow unto thee then sighing softly sore and inly deep she shut up all her plaint in privy grief for her great courage would not let her weep till that old glouch again with sharp reprieve her to restrain and give her good relief through hope of those which merlin had her told should of her name and nation the chief and fetch their being from the sacred mould of her immortal womb to be in heaven enrolled thus as she her recomforted she spied where far away one all in armour bright with hasty gallop towards her did ride her dolour soon she ceased and on her dight her helmet to her courser mounting light her former sorrow into sudden wrath both cousin passions of distroubled sprite converting forth she beats the dusty path love and despite at once her courage kindled hath as when a foggy mist hath overcast the face of heaven and the clear air engrossed the world in darkness dwells till that at last the watery south wind from the seaboard coast up blowing doth disperse the vapour lost and pours itself forth in a stormy shower so the fair Britomart, having disclosed her cloudy care into a wrathful stour, the mist of grief dissolved did into vengeance power. Eftsoons, a goodly shield addressing fair, that mortal spear she in her hand did take, and unto battle did herself prepare. The knight approaching sternly her bespake, Sir knight, that dost thy voyage rashly make, by this forbidden way in my despite ne dost by others death and zample take i read thee soon retire whilst thou hast might lest afterwards it be too late to take thy flight if thrilled with deep disdain of his proud threat she shortly thus fly they that need to fly words fear him babes i mean not thee entreat to pass but mogar thee will pass or die no longer stayed for the other to reply but with sharp spear the rest made dearly known strongly the strange light ran and sturdily struck her full on the breast that made her down decline her head and touch her crupper with her crown but she again him in the shield did smite with so fierce fury and great puissance that through his three square scutcheon piercing quite and through his mailed hauberk by mischance the wicked steel through his left side did glance him so transfixed she before her bore beyond his crop the length of all her lance till sadly sousing on the sandy shore he tumbled on an heap and wallowed in his gore like as the sacred ox that careless stands with gilden horns and flowery girlands crowned proud of his dying honour and dear bands whilst Daltars fume with frankincense around, all suddenly with mortal stroke astound doth grovelling fall, and with his streaming gore disdains the pillars and the holy ground, and the fair flowers that decked him before. So fell proud Marinel upon the precious shore. The martial maid stayed not him to lament, but forward rode, and kept her ready way along the strand, which, as she overwent, she saw bestrowed all with rich array of pearls, and precious stones of great assay, and all the gravel mixed with golden ore, whereat she wondered much, but would not stay for gold or pearls or precious stones an hour, but them despise it all, for all was in her power. Whilst thus he lay in deadly astonishment, tidings hereof came to his mother's ear his mother was the black-browed simowent the daughter of great nereus which did bear this warlike son unto an earthly peer the famous dumarin who on a day finding the nymph asleep in secret where as he by chance did wander that same way was taken with her love and by her closely lay there he this night of her begot whom born she of his father marinel did name and in a rocky cave as white forlorn long time she fostered up till he became a mighty man-at-arms 
and mickle fame did get through great adventures by him done for never man he suffered by that same rich strong to travel whereas he did one but that he must do battle with the sea nymph son an hundred knights of honourable name he had subdued and them his vassals made that through all fairyland his noble fame now blazed was and fear did all invade that none durst passen through that perilous glade and to advance his name and glory more her sea-god sire she dearly did persuade to endow her son with treasure and rich store above all the sons that were of earthly wombs of ore the god did grant his daughter's dear demand to don his nephew in all riches flow eftsoons his heaped waves he did command out of their hollow bosom forth to throw all the huge treasure which the sea below had in his greedy gulf devoured deep and him and richard through the overthrow and wrecks of many wretches which did weep and often wail their wealth which he from them did keep shortly upon that shore there heaped was exceeding riches and all precious things the spoil of all the world that it did pass the wealth of east and pomp of persian kings gold amber ivory pearls ouches rings and all that else was precious and dear the sea unto him voluntary brings that shortly he a great lord did appear as was in all the land of fairy or elsewhere thereto he was a doughty dreaded knight tried often to the scath of many dear that none in equal arms him matchen might the witch's mother seeing gan to fear lest his too haughty hardiness might rear some hard mishap in hazard of his life for this she oft him counselled to forbear the bloody battle and to stir up strife but after all his war to rest his weary knife and for his more assurance she inquired one day of proteus by his mighty spell for proteus was with prophecy inspired her dear son's destiny to her to tell and the sad end of her sweet marinel who through foresight of his eternal skill bade her from womankind to keep him well for of a woman he should have much ill a virgin strange and stout him should dismay or kill for thee she gave him warning every day the love of women not to entertain a lesson too too hard for living clay from love in course of nature to refrain yet he his mother's lord did well retain and ever from fair ladies love did fly yet many ladies fair did oft complain that they for love of him would all gates die die who so list for him he was love's enemy but ah who can deceive his destiny or ween by warning to avoid his fate that when he sleeps in most security and safest seems him soonest doth a mate and findeth due effect or soon or late so feeble is the power of fleshly arm his mother bade him women's love to hate for she of woman's force did fear no harm so weaning to have armed him she did quite disarm this was that woman this that deadly wound that proteus prophesied should him dismay the witch's mother vainly did expound to be heart wounding love which should assay to bring her son unto his last decay so tickled be the terms of mortal state and full of subtle sophisms which do play with double senses and with false debate to prove the knowing purpose of eternal fate too true the famous marinel had found who through late trial on that wealthy strand inglorious now lies in senseless swound through heavy stroke of brittle martis hand which when his mother dear did understand and heavy tidings heard whereas she played amongst her watery sisters by a pond gathering sweet daffodillies to have made gay girlands from the sun their foreheads fair to shade eftsoons both flowers and girlands far away she flung and her fair dewy locks irrent to sorrow huge she turned her former play and gamesome mirth to grievous dreariment she threw herself down on the continent ne word did speak but lay as in a swoun 
whiles all her sisters did for her lament with yelling outcries and with shrieking sound and every one did tear her girland from her crown soon as she up out of her deadly fit arose she bade her chariot to be brought and all her sisters that with her did sit bade eke at once their chariots to be sought though full of bitter grief and pensive thought she to her wagon clomb clomb all the rest and forth together went with sorrow fraught the waves obedient to their behest them yielded ready passage and their rage surceased great neptune stood amazed at their sight whiles on his broad brown back they softly slid and eke himself mourned at their mournful plight yet wist not what their wailing meant yet did for great compassion of their sorrow bid his mighty waters to them buxom be eftsoons the roaring billows still abid and all the grisly monsters of the sea stood gaping at their gate and wondered them to see a team of dolphins ranged in array drew the smooth chariot of sad simoint they were all taught by triton to obey to the long reins at her commandment as swift as swallows on the waves they went that their broad flaggy fins no foam did rear their bubbling roundel they behind them sent the rest of other fishes drawn were which with their finny oars the swelling sea did share soon as they been arrived upon the brim of the rich strand their chariots they forlore and let their timid fishes softly swim along the margin of the foamy shore lest they their fin should bruise and surveyed saw their tender feet upon the stony ground and coming to the place where all in gore and cruddy blood and wallowed they found the luckless marinel lying in deadly swound his mother swooned thrice and the third time could scarce recovered be out of her pain had she not been devoid of mortal slime she should not then have been relieved again but soon as life recovered had the rain she made so piteous moan and dear way meant that the hard rocks could scarce from tears refrain and all her sister nymphs with one consent supplied her sobbing breeches with sad compliment dear image of myself she said that is the wretched son of wretched mother born is this thine high advancement oh is this the immortal name with which be yet unborn thy grandsire nearest promised to adorn now liest thou of life and honour reft now liest thou a lump of earth forlorn now of thy late life memory is left now can thy irrevocable destiny be weft fond proteus father of false prophecies and they more fond that credit to thee give not this the work of woman's hand to wis that so deep wound through these dear members drive i fear it love but they that love do live but they that die do neither love nor hate nathless to thee thy folly i forgive and to myself and to accursed fate the guilt i do ascribe dear wisdom bought too late oh what avails it of immortal seed to be ne bred and never born to die far better i it deem to die with speed than waste in woe and wailful misery who dies the utmost dolor doth abide but who that lives is left to wail his loss so life is loss and death felicity sad life worse than glad death and greater cross to see friends grave than dead the grave self to engross but if the heavens did his days envy and my short bliss malign yet mote they well thus much afford me ere that he did die that the dim eyes of my dear marinel i mote have closed and him bed farewell saith other offices for mother meet they would not grant yet maugre them farewell my sweetest sweet farewell my sweetest son saith we no more shall meet thus when they all had sorrowed their fill they softly gan to search his grisly wound and that they might him handle more at will they him disarmed 
and spreading on the ground their watchet mantles fringed with silver round, they softly wiped away the jelly blood from the orifice, which having well upbound, they poured in sovereign balm at nectar good, good both for earthly medicine and for heavenly food. Though when the lily-handed Leogor, this Leogor Wilom had learned skill in leech's craft by great Apollo's lore, sith her Wilom upon high Pindus hill he loved and at last her womb did fill with heavenly seed, whereof wise peons sprung, did feel his pulse, she knew there stayed still some little life his feeble sprites among, which to his mother told, despair she from her flung, though up him taking in their tender hands, they easily unto her chariot bear, her team at her commandment quiet stands, whilst they the course into her wagon rear and strow with flowers the lamentable beer, then all the rest into their coaches clim, and through the brackish waves their passage sheer. Upon great Neptune's neck they softly swim, and to her watery chamber swiftly carry him. Deep in the bottom of the sea her bower is built of hollow billows heaped high, like to thick clouds that threat a stormy shower, and vaulted all within like to the sky in which the gods do dwell eternally there they him laid in easy couch well dight and sent in haste for tryphon to apply salves to his wounds and medicines of might for tryphon of sea gods the sovereign leech is height the whiles the nymphs sit all about him round lamenting his mishap and heavy plight and oft his mother viewing his wide wound cursed the hand that did so deadly smite her dearest son her dearest heart's delight but none of all those curses overtook the warlike maid the example of that might but fairly well she thrived and well did brook her noble deeds nay her right course for aught forsook yet did false archimage her still pursue to bring to pass his mischievous intent now that he had her singled from the crew of courteous knights the prince and fairy gent whom late in chase of beauty excellent she left pursuing that same foster strong of whose foul outrage they impatient and full of fiery zeal him followed long to rescue her from shame and to revenge her wrong through thick and thin through mountains and through plains those two great champions did at once pursue the fearful damsel with incessant pains who from them fled as light-foot hare from view of hunter swift and scent of houndes true at last they came unto a double way where doubtful which to take her to rescue themselves they did dispart each to assay whether more happy were to win so goodly prey but Timius, the prince's gentle squire, that lady's love unto his lord for Lent, and with proud envy and indignant ire after that wicked foster fiercely went. So been they three, three sundry ways event. But fairest fortune to the prince befell, whose chance it was that soon he did repent to take that way in which that damosel was fled afore, afraid of him as fiend of hell. At last, of her far off he gained view then gan he freshly prick his foamy steed and ever as he nigher to her drew so evermore he did increase his speed and of each turning still kept wary heed aloud to her he oftentimes did call to do away vain doubt and needless dread full mild to her he spake and oft let fall many meek words to stay and comfort her withal but nothing might relent her hasty flight so deep the deadly fear of that foul swain was erst impressed in her gentle sprite like as a fearful dove which through the rain of the wide air her way does cut amain having far off espied a tasseled gent which after her his nimble wings doth strain doubleth her haste for fear to be forehent and with her pinions cleaves the liquid firmament with no less haste and eke with no less dread that fearful lady fled from him that meant to her no evil thought nor evil deed yet former fear of being foully shent carried her forward with her first intent and though oft looking backward well she viewed herself freed from that foster insolent and that it was a knight which now ensued yet she no less the knight feared than that villain rude 
his uncouth shield and strange arms were dismayed whose like in fairyland were seldom seen that fast she from him fled no less afraid than of wild beasts if she had chased been yet he her followed still with courage keen so long that now the golden hesperus was mounted high in top of heaven sheen and warned his other brethren joyous to light their blessed lamps in jove's eternal house all suddenly dim walks the dampish air and grisly shadows covered heaven bright that now with thousand stars was decked fair which when the prince beheld a loathful sight and that perforce for want of languor light he motes or ceases suit and lose the hope of his long labour he gan foully white his wicked fortune that had turned a slope and cursed night that reft from him so goodly scope though when her ways he could no more descry but to and fro a disaventure strayed like as a ship whose lodestar suddenly covered with clouds her pilot hath dismayed his wearisome pursuit perforce he stayed and from his lofty steed dismounting low did let him forage down himself he laid upon the grassy ground to sleep a throw the cold earth was his couch the hard steel his pillow but gentle sleep envied him any rest instead thereof sad sorrow and disdain of his hard hap did vex his noble breast and thousand fancies bet his idle brain with their light wings the sights of semblance vain oft did he wish that lady fair mote be his fairy queen for whom he did complain or that his fairy queen were such as she and ever hasty night he blamed bitterly night thou foul mother of annoyance sad sister of heavy death and nurse of woe which wast begot in heaven but for thy bad and brutish shape thrust down to hell below where by the grim flood of cositus slow thy dwelling is in herebus black house black herebus thy husband is the foe of all the gods where thou ungracious half of thy days dost lead in horror hideous what had the eternal maker need of thee the world in his continual course to keep that dost all things deface and lettest see the beauty of his work indeed in sleep the slothful body that doth love to steep his lustless limbs and drown his baser mind doth praise thee oft and oft from stygian deep calls thee his goddess in his error blind and great dame nature's handmaid cheering every kind but well i wot that to an heavy heart thou art the root and nurse of bitter cares breeder of new renewer of old smarts instead of rest thou lendest railing tears instead of sleep thou sendest troublous fears and dreadful visions in the which alive the dreary image of sad death appears so from the weary spirit thou dost drive desired rest and men of happiness deprive under thy mantle black there hidden lie light shunning theft and traitorous intent of horrid bloodshed and vile felony shameful deceit and danger imminent foul horror and eke hellish dreariment all these i wot in thy protection be and light to shun for fear of being shent for light alike is loath of them and thee and all that lewdness love do hate the light to see for day discovers all dishonest ways and showeth each thing as it is indeed the praises of high god he fair displays and his large bounty rightly doth the reed days dearest children be the blessed seed which darkness shall subdue and heaven win truth is his daughter he her first did breed most sacred virgin without spot of sin our life is day but death with darkness doth begin oh when will day then turn to me again and bring with him his long expected light o oh, titan haste to rear thy joyous wain speed thee to spread abroad thy beam as bright and chase away this too long lingering night chase her away from when she came to hell she she it is that hath me done despite 
there let her with the damned spirits dwell and yield her room to day that can it govern well thus did the prince that weary night outwear in restless anguish and unquiet pain and early ere the morrow did uprear his dewy head out of the ocean main he up arose as half in great disdain and clomb unto his steed so forth he went with heavy look and lumpish pace that plain in him bereyed great grudge and maltalent his steed eke seemed to ply his steps to his intent end of book three canto four recording by thomas copeland